Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 24th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Kim and I met bright and early at the Braddock Bay South Marina. Here you can see looking out over the bay that a lot of it froze overnight. I would say about half of the bay is now frozen. I don't know what the temperature was. I didn't look, but it was probably somewhere around 25 degrees Fahrenheit and it was very cold. I had to exchange my signature orange hat for a more appropriate wintry hat and I think my facial expression about sums up how I felt about the cold temperatures. Here we have a mute swan, and there were a couple of them like this, where this is all ice surrounding them. So at first we were like, did they freeze to death overnight? You know, did the water all freeze around them? But I think they were alive and okay. Just they were sitting really low, so I don't know if they were down in some water that didn't freeze or what was going on. But anyway, it was kind of a strange sight to see first thing in the morning. While scanning through the gall flock, this one stood out to me. And often when we're looking at galls and trying to pick out the unusual ones, we're either looking at the color of the back here, so the shade of the gray, and we're looking at the wingtips. Now, some people look all the way at the back of the bird and they might get confused and think that you're seeing the tail. But actually, these things that you're seeing here that are normally dark, so like here on these galls, those are the wingtips, they're the outermost primaries, and the tail actually sits underneath them and it's hidden most of the time. But this bird caught my eye because we see that its wingtips have a lot of white and just a little bit of black. So that stood out to me as different from the ring-billed galls and herring galls we see that it's usually a lot of black and just a tiny bit of white. Here's another photo showing what I mean. Look at the two herring galls here. See how much black we see on the wingtips compared to our mystery bird that has a lot of white. So our mystery bird, we look at it, it looks maybe slightly smaller than the herring galls. Certainly doesn't look larger. So this is an adult Iceland gall. And it's the third Iceland gall that Kim and I have found over the past week or so, and they've all been different ages. So uh, it's really special to see an adult. That's a plumage and an age that I don't see very often. So really cool bird on a cold morning. Here's a look at Lake Ontario as we walked out the East Spit. And from the tip of the East Spit, looking back toward the barrier island, we had this cool comparison of teal. So the bird on the left is a green winged teal. You see its head here is tucked and we see this vertical line towards the front of the bird. The bird on the right is a blue winged teal and we see the white here more towards the back of the bird. We also had another look at the storm widgeon, which has been hanging around for a few weeks and today it was beautiful to see it in the bright sunlight. A storm widgeon, again, is just sort of a hunter slang for an American widgeon that has extra white on the face. And you can compare the storm widgeon here on the left to a standard American widgeon here on the right. Just notice how much white is on the outline of the face here compared to the normal one. And scanning from the east spit, we spotted this bird, although I took this photo from the South Marina on the way out. Here we see a bird that has more of a darker gray to the back compared to all of the surrounding ring-billed and herring galls. And if we compare it to, in terms of size to the herring gall that's standing behind it, we see that our bird is smaller. So this is a lesser black-backed gall. A great black-backed gall, which is actually the largest gall in the world, would be at least a little bit or even significantly larger than a herring gall. And the color of gray would be even darker. From our morning birding, we had a total of 35 species. Next, we went to Braddock Bay Park to start the hawk watch. You can see there was a layer of snow on the ground and blue skies of death. We don't like completely blue skies for hawk watching because it makes it difficult to spot birds that are high against the sky. Um, it was a very cold day. It never really got above freezing. I think maybe 32 was the high today, maybe only 31. And the winds were out of the north at a light to moderate speed. It was a little bit stronger in the morning and then weakened as the day went on, but it felt pretty chilly overall, but we enjoyed having the sunshine to warm us up. Throughout the day, some of the snow melted from the ground and there was a little bit of cirrus cloud layer that started to move in as we got into the afternoon. Here's a funny looking bird that's actually a kind of woodpecker. So we see a fairly long bill. We see some red on the back of the neck. A little bit of a black bib and then black spotting underneath and we see yellow here in the tail feathers. This is a northern flicker and we see that it has a black mustache here on the face so that lets us know that it is a male northern flicker. 
And our northern flickers here in the eastern United States are the yellow shafted variety. So you see a lot of yellow here on the underwing. And if you look at the shafts of the feathers here, you see they're yellow. Out west, they have the red shafted flickers. Here we have some ducks that are pretty drab overall, but let's take a look at where the white is. We see white patches here in the secondaries, and that's a good field mark to use for gadwall. Here we see a hawk with a long tail, and it had long rounded wings as well, so we should be thinking excipiter. We see that it has orange barring underneath, so that rules out American goshawk, so we should be thinking either adult cooper's hawk or adult sharp shinned hawk. And based on the size of the head, the overall size of the bird, and the behavior, including these fluffed out undertail coverts, this is the local adult Cooper's Hawk. Here we have the top side of a large raptor that's brown on the wings and back with a white head and white tail. This is an adult bald eagle. Here we see another large raptor and we see that it's mostly brown underneath, but also a significant amount of white to the underwings. And we see an even trailing edge to the wings. So this is a juvenile bald eagle. And the even trailing edge is important because as this bird begins to molt these feathers, the ones that it will replace them with are slightly shorter. So in the bald eagles that are coming up on two and three years old, they have an uneven trailing edge to the wing. And another thing that catches my eye about this bird is it looks like it's banded. I see a blue band here on one of the legs. And the real story of the day was turkey vultures. We had over 200 turkey vultures today, and they were pretty much all of the migrants we had other than a couple bald eagles. And with turkey vultures, notice the shape of the wings. They hold their wings up into a shallow V called a dihedral, and they tend to be very unsteady and wobble, especially when it's windy. Also look at that head. We see a red head that has no feathers on it. Here's another classic look at a turkey vulture. Notice that two-toned appearance. And one more thing I'll say, in a lot of the photos today, you'll see that the lighting is really good. And that's because we had a sunny day with a layer of snow on the ground. So the sunlight reflects off that layer of snow and just makes the birds look really bright. I mean, we were watching gulls fly around overhead and it was just stunning how bright they were. But even on the turkey vulture here, you can see how well lit up the underside of the whole bird is. Really good for photography. Here we have a black bird with a really long tail. This is a common grackle. And again, that lighting really lit up. You can see how iridescent it is on the underside. Whereas in poor lighting, this bird might just look completely dark overall. Here we have a swallow that's completely white underneath and we can see a little bit of blue here on the head. This is a tree swallow. And we had about a dozen or 13 tree swallows today. They're really the only swallow that we're seeing so far. Did have one early barn swallow that one day, but other than that, it's all been tree swallows. And here's an example of a herring gull really lit up from that sunlight reflecting off of the snow layer. Here's a turkey vulture that was a bit higher and tucked into more of a glide. You can see it's pushing its wrists forward and the wingtips are tucked a little bit back. So this is classic turkey vulture glide posture. You can also see that really small head. And here's another turkey vulture in a bit of a different posture. This one just has its wings held out completely straight. Here's another large raptor. We see a large head. The underside's a combination of whites and dark browns. So this is an immature bald eagle. And to get the exact age, we'll look at that dark head. There is some um, pale underside to the body here. We'll keep that in mind, but we see an even trailing edge to the wing and some light inner primary feathers. This is the juvenile plumage, so a bird that was born last year. Compare that to this bird, which is more true white here on the breast and underside of the body. Um, maybe a little bit of a ragged trailing edge to the wing, although it's tough to tell from the angle of this photo, but this looks like a, a bird that's coming up on two years old. Here we have a small bird. We see some red here on the upper breast, but also some streaking. This is a male house finch. Here we have kind of a pale raptor that was facing into the wind and hovering. See a really pale tail color, maybe a little bit of a belly band. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here we have a duck, and from the colors you might be able to tell that this is a male mallard. You can see the green head here, although it's not the best photo to show that. But if you look at the speculum, which is this part of the wing here, you'll notice that it's outlined on the trailing edge and the leading edge by white. And that's a good field mark to distinguish mallards from the similar American black ducks. And here we have a large corvid that had a deep croaking call. You can see kind of a long tail, a large head and large bill, and the wingtips are 
pretty pointed, kind of long wings overall. This is a common raven. And by the end of the day, you can see a significant amount of the snow cover had melted, even though it never got above freezing. And you can see a little bit of a cloud layer starting to move in from the horizon. Taking a look at the eBird checklist from the Hawk Watch today, we had 47 species. And I didn't have any new species for the season from the Hawk Watch, but I did go out in the evening with some friends and picked up Eastern Screech Owl. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 203 turkey vultures and 4 bald eagles for a total of 207 migrating raptors. That brings the March total to 2,170 and the season total to 2,328. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for a mix of sun and clouds, much warmer with a high in the mid-50s. Winds are east-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so it's a bit of a strange wind direction for us. There is that southerly component to it, so people get excited, especially with the temperatures being warmer. But with the direction that birds are migrating as they cross Braddock Bay, that's a bit of a headwind. So that means that we sometimes don't get the big numbers on those days because the birds are having to fight into that wind. So sometimes they go kind of low and slow. So. Sometimes it means we end up with better looks at the birds. Um, and I will also say that the Hamburg Hawk Watch had over a thousand turkey vultures today. And they're a site that we look at to see what might be coming our way in the coming days. So definitely some signs of turkey vulture movement as we reach peak turkey vulture migration time. So for tomorrow, I don't know, we might have a moderate day. I wouldn't expect a huge flight, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are some turkey vultures on the move again. For Tuesday, it's looking mostly cloudy in the morning and then showers later on, high up around 60, and again, southeast winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so looking like a bit of a gloomier day, and again, those same winds, so we'll see how we do tomorrow before we make the prediction for Tuesday. I bet it'd be pretty similar or maybe a little bit worse because of the gloomy conditions and the rain moving in. And pay close attention to Wednesday. It's looking partly cloudy in the morning and then cloudy for the afternoon with a high in the mid-50s and winds west-southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it's a good wind right as we reach the peak of the turkey vulture migration after we've had a period of poor migration. Um, it's looking like the best winds. They took all of the rain out of the forecast. So I would definitely keep an eye on Wednesday as potentially the next big flight. All right, well, hopefully today was the end of the very cold weather, although it's been kind of nice to have some ice on the bay. There's been good gall numbers and good duck variety around, so that's been fun, but freezing our fingertips off has not been fun. So looking forward to the temperatures getting back into the 50s the next few days, and we'll hope that we'll get some increasing raptor migration as well. So I hope to see you soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.